Hello to everybody. Welcome to this uh, online uh, public discussion that takes place within the framework of the European Forum 2020, uh, which is a big event of leftist, green and progressive forces uh, that this year takes place online during the whole of November. Uh, this seminar, um, it's more like a discussion, is organized by Transform, but also the Dialogue Project. The title is Christian and Marxist Dialogue uh, on Achieving Ecological Ecumenism. And uh, we have uh, four speakers, Walter Bayer and Cornelia Hildebrandt on the side of Transform Europe. Walter Bayer used to be for years the political coordinator of the network. Now he's a member of the board of Transform. And Cornelia Hildebrandt is uh, one of the co-presidents of our network and she comes from the Rosa Luxemburg Foundation. I have also to introduce Federico Rave. Hello, Federico. He is currently doing his PhD in educational studies at um, the University of Padua in Italy. And he also works as um, an invited lecturer at the Sofia University Institute. Hello, Federico. Um. And Raul. Hello, Raul. Uh, he's also doing his PhD in philosophy at the University of Florence, and he is also an assistant professor in the Department of Theology, Philosophy and Human Sciences at Sofia University Institute as well. Um, uh, just a few words um, on the topic, and of course I'm immediately giving the floor uh, to our speakers. Um, but, well, uh, I come from uh, I come from Greece, so not from a Catholic background, but from an Orthodox one. And I can say that uh, both churches, the Catholic and the Orthodox, seem to agree on the high significance of uh, the humankind to tackle the climate crisis. For the Catholics, um, the 2015 encyclical letter of uh, Pope Francis, Laudato Si, is an important stage on the tradition of the Catholic Church in the relation with, uh, with critical social issues. Uh, on the other hand, for the Orthodox, the Ecumenical Patriarchate decided back in 1989 to declare the 1st of September as the day for the protection of the natural world and the creation. And um, this was uh, kind of a critical step for the Orthodox Church towards what they call an ecumenic and ecological re evangelization. Uh, in parallel, another important document of the Holy and um, Great Council of the Orthodox Church back in 2016 talks about the human illusion of the supremacy and the dominance over the natural environment. Apart from these that are quite specific and can be found within documents, we shall all be aware that concepts of the concepts of theological ecology and or ecological theology, but also of um, the fact that within uh, the very body of the heritage of the liberation the theology, there is a special chapter on ecological questions and concerns such as the contribution uh, of the great ecotheologist Leonardo Boff. Uh, but now I have to give the floor to my colleague Walter, who will say a few words upon the very concept of the dialogue uh, project, uh, this transverse, transversal dialogue between Christians and Marxists. Uh, dear Walter, please. Hello, thank you, Angelina. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to to express my gratitude uh, to both uh, the hosts of the European Forum of the Left, of the Progressive Forces, and to our Christian friends who uh, are available to participate in this event. Uh, it's worth to mention that it's maybe the very first time in history that the left opens itself to a dialogue uh, to the Christian public in one of its, so to say, central and uh, important international events. And at the same time, it's historical that uh, Christians uh, 
opted to participate in such an event. And although we know that it is a little step, uh, at the same time, it has its historic uh, significance. And I am really thinking that it's worth uh, to uh, emphasize and showcase uh, this fact. Second, I did not choose uh, the title uh, of this discussion, but I must confess that uh, ecumeny is one of my favorite words. Uh, maybe uh, Connie and uh, Angelina know that I use this notion uh, to describe the necessity uh, to enter into a dialogue a relation among the different, as I used to say, churches of the left. I believe that dialogue within the left and of the left with the intellectual and uh, philosophical and cultural uh, environment is not only um, a precondition uh, for cognition, uh, you can not understand the world properly uh, if you are not willing to enter in a dialogue in, uh, with the people around you, far and close uh, around you. And at the same time, uh, it's a precondition for agency, meaning for changing the world. And that's it, uh, what the whole discussion of today is about, changing the world. It's not a philosophical, nor a theological, um, nor a cultural exercise. It's a conversation about how we can jointly cope with the dramatic crisis which humanity has entered paradoxically due to its richness and due to the plentiness of uh, its possibilities. And that is a very serious matter. We are now in a stage in, in which we are threatened to destroy the world and within the world, uh, our civilization. And uh, my last uh, word in this context of introducing our debate would be that um, the election of Pope Francis and the sequence of his encyclical uh, letters, and in particular, uh, Laudato Si and Fratelli Tutti, the recent one, by the way, Peter Steinmeier Bösel, a theologian who cooperates within our dialogue uh, project, has counted 41 times the word dialogue uh, in the encyclical letter um, uh, Fratelli Tutti. Uh, that is a world historical change that from the top of the Catholic Church, the needs of humanity to transform the productive uh, basis and the consumer, the, the consuming, the, the mode of consumption of our society is, of our societies is addressed in this uh, direct way. And I think uh, the left uh, is well advised to use this window of opportunity to arrive at the ecumeny, uh, not only among itself, but also uh, to an ecumeny with all good willing forces in the world, not only to talk, but to act jointly. Thank you very much, dear Walter. Um, so Federico Raul, who wants to take the floor and respond, I would like also an overview from you, from your side, on how you see this project. Well, uh, I think we, we can both say something about this. Yeah, sure, Raul. Thank you very much, uh, Angelina, and also Walter and Connie. Uh, yeah, I, I really find myself in what uh, Walter says. Um, well, we we were firstly invited to participate in this project, and we have been participating for three years or so now. And uh, what uh, what I learned, and 
especially from uh, the the left parties and the left um, the leftists they said let's say is that uh, <coughs> mm, when when you can build and you can yeah you you, you can find yourself uh, uh, doing a real experience of dialogue uh, you can feel free no so mainly it's a it's a, first of all it's um let's say it's a personal experience of feeling free as and and secondly uh, it's a uh, it's a path i think it's not only a choice but it's the the only path uh, th um, towards transformation and towards social justice nowadays because uh at least as uh, pope francis says uh, and stresses it a lot as we can see from his last encyclical fratelli tutti uh, that it's about uh, uh, fraternity and um, social friendship is that uh, dialogue is a, is, is a kind of uh, um, of it's, it's a it's a way of building this uh, political uh, it's, it's uh, sorry if, um, social friendship and mainly it's I would say it's an it's a political act because uh, somehow um, through through dialogue, uh, I mean the reason for for me dialoguing at least is uh, uh, that uh, through dialogue we can recognize uh, the richness of the other's tradition. No, so me as a Christian, uh, it's a, it's a it's a must to um, to meet other traditions, to learn from other traditions. And not to assimilate the other's traditions to mine, but to uh, to recognize the difference, to recognize the the richness of uh, of the, the tradition itself, and to know that this is a source of critical thought towards me, and and that's why I, I would say the. Yeah, I, I would like to develop later on this idea of dialogue as a political act. But I think uh, Federico can also say something. Federico. Yes, uh, first of all, thank you, uh, Angelina. Thank you, Walter and Condi. And thank you to all the organizers for inviting and having us today. Uh, it's really a, a pleasure to have a, a public occasion to, to discuss and to, and to share uh, also the experience of the dialogue project. Um, which has been, as Raoul said, going on for some years now. And I think it already uh, reached some, some points, actually. Uh, I am personally very, very happy and very, um, uh, and also very willing to look uh, where we'll, uh, we'll, we will we'll go next, actually. And going on uh, with what Walter said from the, the left, more leftist side, and I say more leftist side because I, I always have um, uh, a doubt about talking so strictly about identities because also in, into this path of dialogue we are going to, uh, I always have the feeling that uh, these identities are not as uh, strong and stable and differentiated as we think. Uh, so many times I, I have found myself discussing uh, with someone who was supposed to be from a different side and then uh, we found ourselves uh, with so many similarities and other kinds of differences that we didn't expect before. Uh, so it's also, uh, it's also an, an experience of negotiating the identities and of finding uh, different points of convergence and of differences. And this is always uh, very interesting, actually. And I'd say that this is also something um, something new, something in a, in a sense groundbreaking for Catholic movements, that, uh, that there's a possibility to develop a dialogue um, with, um, with the, the, the leftist socialist tradition. Uh, and especially it's groundbreaking in this time 
where we can dialogue um, sharing a common concern. And this is one of the, um, of the most important things uh, in, in this project for me, uh, that we meet and we, we, we can meet because we share some concerns. And the differences in, in the two traditions involved uh, are not um, um, are less important than the concerns that we share and the the path we want to go through together. Uh, so I can leave the floor to Connie, I guess. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Actually, I would like to listen to Connie how she reacts on. Uh, yeah, Federico said that. Uh, these identities seem more solid as they actually are and that we share more common ground as uh, it seems. And also Raul mentioned very clear the need for social transformation. Uh, so Connie. Yeah, as, as the first point is... Uh, is uh, is not so easy. Also for me, is it easy because I'm not a non-religious people. I'm, I'm a socialist or communist and I work with the tools of Marxism. And But I work a lot of time together with people. They are, have their self-understanding as a, a Marxist Christian or Christian Marxist people. And I work with them together a long of time. And uh, in, in this discussion, I understood that uh, the differences between to be a Marxist and to be a Christian is not a problem. It's easy to bring it together. But it's a question if you uh, believe in God or not. And, but this difference is not a problem for political dialogue. That is my experience. And my question for dialogue is uh, another question, also a democratic question. I want to make three comments to this question. At first, I see that our society today is increasingly plural, social, political, ideological. And I, it seems for me really important to defend the open democratic character of our societies with all no and empty between the people, as you can see in the USA, the diversity in enmity, but a diversity in solidarity, not as a slash of culture, but the creation of a world in which many worlds have their place, this character of the inclusive society. Also to build in the, under the conditions of the secular world, with the diversity of believing, of thinking, of ideologies, to create a common world as an inclusive world for everybody, for women and men, for migrants and the people around the world. That how we can do it more precisely, that is my question, in which democratic way we can translate it, our kind of diversity. And the second problem I will touch is uh, the radical left has the goal to change the world radical, fundamentally. But if you want to change the world, then we have to find majorities, social majorities. And if you see the situation of the political left in Europe, you can see we are not in the majority. We are in the position of defensive. And the question is how we can get off this situation, how we can build a new kind of broad alliances of a broad possibility and understanding that we have to change the world in the direction of the social ecological transformation. And to build such kind of new alliances, for that is it necessary that we are going in dialogue, that we have dialogue. And dialogue is not, we are agree with everything. No, dialogue is a hard work. Dialogue, that means we have differences. We have to handle the differences. 
and we have dialogue with the consequences to find a way for action. And that is a big challenge for us to describe not only, not only the dialogue as a methodology, to describe the dialogue as a way for a changing this situation. That is my answer to this question at first. Thank you. Thank you, Connie. Okay, since we already start touching these questions, I want to, I want you from more to go a bit deeper and discuss about the very motivation of you. Why you wanted to start, I mean, why as a Christian you want to have a dialogue with a Marxist and why as a Marxist from all the different social, political, cultural groups and identities, you choose to initiate a dialogue with the Christians. If we do actually believe that the Christians is um, a homogeneous identity, are all the Christians the same? And I would also like to listen from Raul and Federico, if you feel more close with any kind of Christian, or maybe with uh, a non-believer who shares also, though with you, um, a common vision about uh, society or how uh, about the human interaction, for example. Um, and um, yes, I want also to listen from all of you um, what uh, some elements that you actually uh, appreciate to the other, uh, what a Christian can appreciate from a socialist and vice versa, but also what kind of elements you clearly despise what kind of aspects or a methodology of thinking or um, the vision of the world, aspects of the vision of the world, you believe it is unapproachable for your thought and, um, yes, the way you perceive the world. Uh, Walter, you would be the first to react. Of course, when talking about motivation, there is also a personal, always a personal motivation and a political motivation. Uh, as far as the personal motivation is concerned, uh, I want to tell you that I was raised in a family of which uh, the father uh, was uh, a survivor of Auschwitz and the mother uh, was a very humble Catholic person and uh, when they decided to raise a child uh, they decided to have it raised uh, in, in a Catholic uh, or, uh, as belonging to the Catholic Church. Uh, the father agreed because he wanted to protect the child from the possibility of being prosecuted as a Jew and the mother was happy because she was part of the Catholic Church. So for me, uh, religious identity always has been something, uh, I would even say postmodern, the composition of very uh, different parcels in my life and very different um, uh, components uh, of my thinking, uh, which why I never understood after becoming a socialist and a communist why even the most open-minded comrades uh, whom I knew had such an inimical attitude when it comes to uh, religious questions. And that uh, brought me to one of the basic conclusions of my personal and of my political life. I uh, do not believe in identity. I think if you want to remain yourself, you have to be prepared and you have to enjoy to change yourself. But if you change yourself, then you are some, somebody different than you have been previously. So uh, if you do not want to be a dogmatic person who defends something which he or she believes uh, as uh, unreducible identity as a core of uh, yourself. But if you want to be open to the world and to um, 
the impact which the outer world makes on your, yourself, you have to be uh, a person who enjoys changing and developing uh, him or, or herself. And uh, what fascinates me in the people uh, who participate in our dialogue is that they maybe see the world in the same way, namely as a challenge, not something which you have to address with uh, an explanation, but something which you have to understand through questioning and uh, through uh, the readiness uh, to change. And it's remarkable that I follow this, or, or I'm part of the process of the dialogue now since 20 years. And in these 20 years, uh, many people dropped out of the process. And I think they dropped out of the process because they don't feel comfortable with being continuously, uh, continuously challenged. And um, uh, when you ask me what I particularly like uh, um, with uh, my Christian uh, friends and comrades, uh, it is, uh, I would say, uh, ethical sincerity, which you are permanently threatened to lose if you deal professionally with politics. Because politics is struggle, and struggle uh, requires cunning, and uh, it makes also a different person out of you. And uh, what I learned with my Catholic friends is that there is, so to say, the possibility, and I believe that the Catholic Church is a very political space, but there's a possibility to be political, meaning to act within an institution while at the same time uh, keep sincerity. Maybe it's the principle of love which they put forward so prominently. Maybe it's the very special quality of the persons with which uh, we have to do in this context. But this I enjoy uh, uh, very much. And this I, I, I learned from them and I apply also in my political practice. And maybe um, that is, so to say, a secret, but um, that what Christian calls the principle uh, of love and what I would call, so to say, um, solidarity and generosity and the willingness to accept your partner or you, your competitor or your opponent also as a person is also a recipe of success. You do better politics if you believe in the capacity of people to behave humanly. It's a winning, it's a winning recipe, not in any particular moment, but in the long term, it pays off if you apply this recipe, which why I'm particularly uh, grateful uh, for the uh, way, for the trajectory uh, which we passed uh, during the uh, last two decades and with uh, Raul and Federico in the last five years, if I remember rightly. Thank you, Walter. Um, so Federico or Raul? Who wants to react first? I can Federico. try to start this time, yes. Uh, even if it's also always very hard to try and say something meaningful after Walter has spoken, but we have to try anyway. So um, uh, I would also like to, to say something about personal motivations for this dialogue, um, because uh, actually when I, uh, when I joined this project, uh, almost yeah, four or five years ago, I actually don't remember exactly. Uh, it seems to me uh, as something very natural uh, on, on a personal level. Uh, of course, because I've, uh, I've always been involved almost uh, all my life from, from high school uh, with uh, leftist students groups and social centers and, and different political experiences. Uh, on the other side, in, in Christian groups. So for me, it was really something, the, the dialogue between uh, Christian spirituality and uh, Marx, a Marxist approach to politics, uh, it was also something that was already part of my experience. So it was nothing really, 
uh, really new or strange, I would say. Uh, so for me, it was really, uh, um, I, I remember the feeling of finding something that I really thought, well, the, the, this is what should be done. Okay. Um, because it's something that for me, it was natural. Actually, I, I also remember pretty clearly that uh, when, when I started actually discovering a bit more about uh, the gospel and Christianity with, with, my, with my family, because I come from, from a Christian family, and, and with my father, we discussed a bit something about the gospel and about love and about the love for the poor, especially. And I remember very well thinking with myself, okay, that, that's basically what leftist politicians try to do. So uh, I, I don't know, I've always had this feeling that uh, Christian values and leftist and Marxist values have uh, really a, a big common ground. And the thing I think that I like the most about this, uh, about this dialogue and the, about the, the about all the leftist friends we are we are dialogue with, uh, it's the I, I don't know actually how to express it rightly in English. I would say I'm sorry to the interpreters, but uh, it's the um, how you are very skilled in keeping your feet on the ground, uh, and all the the attention you give to a very precise social and economical analysis of situations because it's something that in Christian groups it's um, very often lacking. Uh, there's a high richness in spiritualities and values and morals and personal relationships, but uh, really I, I, I'd say that we have a problem with social analysis uh, and to be aware of what is happening on a broader level, which is not personal and not ethical, I would say, but on the political, economical and, and social level, Yes, there, there, there's a lack, and it's always very interesting to have the occasion to listen to you uh, speaking and analyzing what, what is happening, actually, what's happening. And I don't know, actually, un until now, I, I have to say, I, I haven't found uh, really something that for me is. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a close point in our dialogue, something I, I, I said I really do not like or I absolutely cannot agree with this, but I think this is also a kind of a quality of our dialogue, so that I don't think there are topics we cannot discuss or we cannot learn uh, from each other something. Um, maybe we still haven't touched some of the most uh, of the most difficult topics to to find an agreement or or to find a path to dialogue with um, but actually i i am i am looking forward to it actually I, I am looking forward for the moment where where we will touch something uh, that we will identify as a point on which we cannot agree upon in any possible case. Uh, so th this is going to be an interesting moment, I guess. And I can leave the floor, I think. I don't know. I wanted to say something else, but now I don't remember it. So maybe it will come again later. <laughs> yes. Raul, I do believe that you will find a point where that you despise actually in a socialist. <laughs> Uh, well, now first of all, uh, I wanted to um, to say a couple of things about uh, the motivations of this dialogue. Uh, maybe uh, later on I would try to, to give you an answer. But uh, personally, uh, I mean, I was invited the first time to, to participate in, in, in one of the meetings and I... Uh, from the very beginning, I, I felt that I, I was participating in a, in a, let's say, a dialogical space that was already uh, built, already going on. So it was like people that came before me had already been dialoguing and deeply, and they were able to create this space where uh, I I felt uh, I felt good. I felt at home, uh, and so I was not like 
uh, at, the, uh, at the defensive, no? It's not defending my position or scared, whatever. So this helped a lot. And yeah, of course, there are uh, people that was working, especially um, Franz Kronreis and, and Walter Weyer. And, and I mean, as a Christian, then uh, there's a very uh, deep motivation that is uh, linked to the, to the idea of ecumenism that Walter addressed uh, in the, at the beginning of his uh, presentation. And I mean, uh, ecumenism means that, I mean, the, 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 the inhabited place, the, the, our home, our common home, let's say. So it's like uh, the subtitle of uh, Laudato Si Encyclical, it's the, the common home, so it's a ecumenical encyclical. And indeed, he addresses it, or he, he says that, uh, Pope Francis says that he was inspired by uh, the um, ecumenical uh, patriarch uh, Bartholomeus from Constantinople. You know? And so somehow, why? Why, why this? Because uh, it's our, our common place, our common home. So. Uh, it's it's a place where where we meet and we have to deal with the same with, with the place we we share, let's say, and that we feel it's our home. Uh, so from uh, from this perspective, uh, I, I I just follow the teachings of of the church too. You know? uh, but yeah, of course, I can say from 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 from, from this hand, uh, from, yeah. Uh, I mean, dialoguing, I, I feel good with Christians, of course. I, I remember first you, Angelina, asked us if it was the same to, or how, how did you feel dialoguing with the other Christians, our brothers in faith, I would say, and how was it uh, with, uh, with non-believers or yeah, non-religious non people? But uh, this time too, uh, I would say that uh, Pope Francis wrote the the recent uh, encyclical Fratelli Tutti, and it was addressed to. Uh, he said that he was inspired in um, the a, a Grand Imam from Al Azhar. Uh, so uh, I mean, it's not a brother in faith. And, and that the very heart of, the, of this uh, encyclical, we can find the parable of the Good Samaritan. You know, it's a, I don't know if you know, but it's a parable where uh, a, a Jewish, a Hebrew, helps uh, a foreigner, uh, someone who didn't share his faith, who didn't belong to his land, to his place. So it's the kind that here we can find again this ecumenism. You know? and and how uh, this, this is a motivation for me to, to dialogue, to open myself and to go and find uh, other people that feels uh, things in another way. Uh, and last thing uh, about how I approach dialogue and how I think, um, I mean, which are the, the methods or the way we perceive the, 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 the word, the, the reality. Uh, and I, 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 would, I would say that uh, at least two things. One uh, is that, um, Pope, again, Pope Francis speaks about uh, that uh, unity prevails over conflict. So I'm not afraid of conflict. We shouldn't be afraid of conflict. And we should uh, recognize the, the other's identity, the difference, uh, the positive difference of the other. And maybe as Federico said once, uh, I, I'm looking forward to, to go deeply where we, we, we don't share things, where, we, where our, our thoughts are different. But 
uh, I think there we can um, recognize really the difference of the others as a difference uh, through, let's say, a differentiated consensus. And maybe, who knows, uh, it's not a matter of changing the other's mind, but it's a matter of understanding uh, a new way of seeing things, of broadening, broadening uh, our ambitions, and mainly uh, learning from you that, that that's, uh, I think, one of your the leftist tradition, richness, uh, this uh, critical thinking, this social analysis of, of reality. And, and so I think with this, I can answer to Angelina's provocation. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Raul. Um, Valder, you know, there is a question. Well, it's not, yes, it is a question from Franz Conrad here in the Q&A box. He is saying, my experience is that at the one side, this dialogue indeed tames me, but on the other side, entering in the mind of my interlocutor, locutor, I deepen my Christian roots. I am becoming more Christian. What do you think about this, Walter? He precisely addressing the question to you. Your microphone. I can confirm from my side uh, that um, looking through the eyes of um, Christian friends and comrades helps me uh, to understand better um, the ethics of uh, communism and also uh, to develop a critical attitudes uh, to ways in which uh, communism has betrayed its own ideals. So it's true that in a dialogue, uh, you help each other also by teaching uh, to look through the eyes uh, of your interlocutor. And there are many, many uh, uh, experiences uh, of this uh, way. Uh, Politics always has to do with compromises, and um, sometimes your compromises uh, are bad ones in the sense that they remain below the possibilities. And I find that the constant um, confrontation with the views of people who share a considerable part of your values, but at the same time are not subordinated uh, to the political logic and the power logic, uh, challenge uh, yourself in terms of being more radical and uh, radicality actually, meaning looking at the roots of things and trying uh, to um, handle the things from the roots on, uh, is that what we uh, attribute to ourselves. And that, let me say this uh, additionally, applies in particular uh, to many of the writings of Pope uh, Francis. I really would advise my socialist comrades, as Michael Löwy said in the previous webinar, to read and to study uh, Laudato Si and its critique uh, towards uh, capitalism, not only as an economic system, also as an economic system, but also as a way of living, involving also ourselves as individuals. And this way of thinking radically also about oneself and also about oneself's involvement in the injustice uh, of the world and in its self-destructive uh, character, that uh, is something which socialists can learn uh, from Christians and particularly uh, from the writings of Pope Francis. Thank you, Walter. I want also to give the floor to Connie, but before that, I want also to comment something. And please, Connie, consider this in your input. Um, well, my constant um, inner struggle, struggle within this dialogue is this, that, uh, okay, yes, I'm an atheist, 
uh, also coming from an atheist family. Um, on the one hand, it is the philosophical and anthropological aspect where we can say we share a lot of common elements, a lot of common elements, uh, both in uh, the human as an individual entity, but also for the society, etc. But on the other hand, here comes the real life, the everyday life, politics, etc. So you meet uh, in an institution that is called church. And an institution, we all know, any kind of institution, um, tends from its uh, very um, uh, fo foundations to, to prevent radical social transformations. An institution is about preservation and about the reproduction of uh, the current status quo of the establishment. Okay, and we we have so many examples for this. You don't have to mention uh, all the times that the Catholic Church and the Orthodox Church have been completely conservative and against the very movement of society. Okay, uh, but this is what uh, this is what it is extremely difficult for me to solve this contradiction. I mean, yes, we. I, I can imagine you standing next to me on uh, the ecological question, on the refugee uh, question, etc., on many questions. But I know that on the next corner, you, not you, you understand, huh? the church, uh, will be on the other side completely. So how do you, Connie, at least in your mind, look, kind of Lou, um, handle this contradiction? Your microphone. I will start with a personal remark because it, my, uh, I had a lot to learn, but not only myself, I, I self had to learn. I, my father's mother was a communist. My father's father was a social democrat. It was difficult enough. My mother's father and my mother's mother were Catholics and Swabs, a national Slavic minority in the GDR time. I grew up as an atheist and I was a typical child of the GDR. I was in the children organization. I was in the youth organization. And later I was member of the Socialist United Party in the GDR. And I studied philosophy, Marxist, Leninist philosophy. I was influenced by the historical materialism as a scientific worldview of Marxism, Leninism. But I also learned under the leading of the role of Marxism, Leninism, other worldviews and religious religions were devaluated and some of them were declared to be dissenters and enemies. For example, and that was important for my own development on this way. In the beginning of the 80s, the Protestantic Economic Church started a consular process for peace, social justice, and privatization of creation. This consular process, it was really important, was connected, also connected with the concrete critique of politics. But the public critique of politics in the socialist state was more or less not allowed. And it was dangerous, dangerous, for the people, for the critical people, for the crit critical thinking. And what I understood after the collapse of the state socialism was a society that suppressed other worldviews, suppresses religious, cannot be an emancipatory society emancipative society. It is also possible to fight for a social world, for social justice, for just transition as Christian, as Muslim, as Buddhist people or as a believer. And it is a better lesson 
bitter lesson from the state socialism of the GDR that the centers were declared as the enemies, enemies of socialism. And that lesson accompanies me until today. That is a bitter lesson also for my own biography. And so I'm on the way to see, we have to see broader. We have to see in what kind of pluralism we can reach our own knowledge. And uh, Federico, for me, it's funny because if you say you, are, you have a lack of uh, social analysis, when if I read at first Evangelii Gaudium and then Laudato Si and then Fratelli Tutti, it is a compensation of social analysis that is a great, uh, great uh, battle of unsocial analysis and really precisely and what we can learn also is such kind of uh, understanding the current problem, the worldwide open questions and to translate it in the language that everybody is able to understand the problem and the connection between all of them. And that we can learn to speak so that everybody can understand what does it mean to have open questions, to have the challenge on the world and to find uh, or you are looking for solutions for all these problems. What we can learn from the Christians or from the religious people from I think we have maybe also some problems with the social analysis. We have to be more precisely. And what we have to looking for is for concrete strategic project to translate our analysis in concrete strategic projects. That is the challenge for us. And what I think what we have missing or what we can from you is spirituality to build a community that is not only based on rationality. Of course, we have to be rational, but not all the time. Community that also touches people's feeling. Community that helps to be a pain as an illness and death. Community that gives comfort. In such cases, praying together can be very useful and helpful. Prayer also gives the possibility for inner reflection, maybe also for collective reflection. That would be very useful also for the leftists too. We are leftists. We are born to fight for class struggle, for determine our culture and society full of class struggles. Of course, clear, the society is full of class struggles. At the same time, it makes sense to think with the class struggle, with the class perspective, beyond the class. When it comes to a broad alliance against the climate change, for example, we need to think from the poorest of the society over the poorest of the society. And my feeling is that uh, Pope Francis is really good to address such message to all of us. Of course, dialogue, I uh, told it before, is not only a nice, nice thing. And of course, we know, we know all differences between the radical left, between our own struggling between us. And I know also that the Catholic Church is not a harmonious body of institution. I see a lot of different positions. And if you compare, for example, some position from Pope Benedict and Pope Francis, you can see some differences in the thinking. And the Christian church unites different viewpoints view on many worldly issues. Certainly also diversity of the theological viewpoints, which there are many different opinions also about of the role of women. And the role of women, that could be really a difficult point and that is the differences. 
I know that everything's connected with the divine, divine creation belongs to the core of Christian faith. Nevertheless, for example, the ban of, on abortion and the tightening on this ban by the Polish government with the support of the Catholic Church in Poland must be reacted from the left wings. And I'm not sure. I haven't heard anything about the Pope to this question. But we can't be silent to this question. The consequences is more stronger for the Catholic Church itself. But I see progress. I see also progress. It's in the paragraph 23 of Fratelli Tutti, that shows me that Pope Francis is thinking about this question. Women and men should have equal dignity and rights. That is good. The question is, what does it mean for the daily life? What does it mean for the woman in the daily life? What dignity, Obviously. what kind of rights they have? And that maybe we have to see as one differences between us. Many things. Thank you, Connie. Yes, the example you gave now with a woman's right to a safe and legal abortion is exam exactly one example of what I was trying to explain before, that uh, wh what we do then, and I guess that it is also a problem for you, Raul and Federico, how you debate such things within your Christian brothers and sisters, I guess. Uh, because obviously the left needs to fight for it, but the left would have fight for it in their way. The question is also, people within the churches uh, to, to, to fight for those rights and to, to build alternative narratives with, within the church. Federico, I think that you wanted to react, so I'm giving you the floor. Yes. Um, I wanted to react on, uh, on what you said about dealing with the Catholic Church as an institution. But actually, Connie, you have already said part of, of what I had in my mind. So that um, is, I think that it's not that easy to describe the Catholic Church as one institutional body. Uh, what you said, Angelina, it's nothing I, I can deny, actually, that the Catholic Church, as every other institution, actually, it's very much attached to uh, keeping some, at least some parts of the status quo. This is also the role of an institution to keep, keep things stable. But actually the Catholic Church as every other institution is not a, 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 a unique homogeneous body. Into the Catholic Church you have very different positions, very different sensibilities, and you also have, um, how can I say, um, and an, an example that came into my mind is uh, all the work that uh, Catholics groups are doing, for example, in, in the migrant crisis, in, uh, in parts of Europe where the states are not even considering the problem, in, in many parts of the peripheries of big cities where there's not institutional help, uh, there's the Catholic Church, actually. So it's, it's not easy to, to, to describe the Catholic Church as an institution, because of course it's an institution, but it's also an institution which is lived by very different sensibilities and local situations. So uh, of course it's, it's a question, it's a question. The, the role of the Catholic Church in, in keeping the status quo but it also has to be always considered that there is a, a hidden movement, which is not on the media most of the times, which is not on the big news, uh, but which is actually in, in the hands of, uh, of the Catholic Church many times. And it's way more difficult to answer to your provocation on the question of abortion, of course. Um, I, I wouldn't say that the question is uh, right now to mobilize Catholics on the 
uh, on the, the, the question of the right to safe abortion, uh, because for Catholics this is a very sensitive question, of course, so even saying that abortion is, is a right that should be safeguarded, uh, it, it's not so easy in, into, into Christian, uh, in, in, in Christian thought. Uh, quite the opposite, actually. Uh, so I, I guess that the point of discussion would be uh, on, on the more on, on the foundations of this problem. So in which sense, and this is something which is, would be very useful to develop, a discussion whether what constitutes a right, in which sense abortion should be described as a right in, in, in your thoughts and in your feelings. And, and on, the, on, on the other side, also giving the space to listen why uh, in, in the teachings of, uh, in, in the social teaching of, of, the, of the Catholic Church, um, abortion is not seen as a right. So I don't think that on this particular topic, uh, right now there's a space for uh, calling to a direct action, but for sure there's a space calling for further development of, uh, of, of the dialogue and of the study. Thank you, Federico. Um, I think that we have done a pretty good first circle. Now maybe it's time to move on the very topic of this discussion, which is uh, ecology and how we both can come together to achieve ecological ecumenism. Um, I want to give the floor um, maybe to Walter now. And uh, yes, focus on this topic now. Yes, uh, but just allow me one uh, remark to how to address uh, differences. Uh, I must say that uh, I'm always a little bit uh, reluctant to address uh, the differences uh, because uh, I want to avoid to embarrass uh, our partners. Uh, and I suspect that the embarrassment uh, would be that we jointly find out uh, that we even in the delicate issues, we do not disagree that much as we are supposed to disagree. Um, for example, uh, the, the role of women in the Catholic Church, I believe that is my this is really my deepest concern, and I believe that there will be no renovation of the Catholic Church unless it changes the role of women in a revolutionary way. I mean, it's not an issue of gradually developing the possibilities. That is really the necessity of a qualitative leap. And whenever Connie or I address this issue in our discussions, I observe that at least the women in the room start to smile or uh, indicate through their body language that they agree with it. And this is the problem with any dialogue. You dialogue only with your friends and the people whom you address with your critique do not sit on the table. And that is, for me at least, um, a certain psychological barrier to speak on things uh, as open as it uh, would be necessary and appropriate. As for abortion, first of all, politically, it is unnegotiable. Christians conclude from the likeness of uh, the person to God uh, that any, at any stage uh, the uh, human personality is untouchable and uh, sacred. Socialists, feminists having their feet on the ground say the uh, right of every and each woman to uh, have uh, its enormous decision on their body uh, must be respected. 
From this perspective, definitely unnegotiable. But at the same time, uh, I would like us to agree on one simple thing, and I think it is possible. Whatever you may think ethically, if abortion, it has no place in the penal code of a country. It is not something on which the state has to decide. Because that is unjust, that disadvantages the lower classes, this is repressive, and at the end of the day, it's the domination of women uh, of men over women's body. And I believe that there is space to discuss on this issue, because one thing is ethics, and the other thing is the state and the state law. And now I consumed a lot of time of this uh, uh, of this intervention for uh, hammering out this point. But a one word about ecology. I believe that um, the innovative uh, quality of uh, the stances which Pope Francis takes in the encyclical letters consists uh, in uh, the recognition that the world uh, is in a multiple crisis which can not be separated one from the other. This is the question of peaceful conviviality of people. This is the question of uh, the ecological uh, alternative to um, environmental degradation. And this is social inequality. And the inseparability of these uh, two, uh, of these three crises uh, leads him to the consequence that it is not only about changing individual behavior, but it's about introducing structural changes that we live in a society that kills and this society uh, must be structurally changed towards a society in which human values and ecological uh, solidarity prevails over the uh, um, maximization uh, of profits. And uh, I think this is so close to the way how socialists interpret uh, the problems of the world in which we are in, uh, that on the one side, we can always deepen this analysis, uh, but I think that we are now in a moment also in our dialogue that we have to transcend the stage in which we interpret the world and start thinking about common ways how to uh, change it. And um, in my vocabulary, I would say that uh, the dialogue uh, must become more structurally and must become more political. Thank you, Walter. Uh, so, um, Connie, would you like to open now the debate regarding the ecological issues? We have, because we, are, we have one hour left. Mm -hmm. I thought, I, I was thinking in this moment, what does it mean more structural and more political to think this? Also in this moment, I thought uh, the words of, uh, of Walter. And uh, for me, also for me, it was interesting also uh, to see in, the, in two social encyclicals that their social analysis in the best sense about, about the most important problems of the time more or less an interpretation of the sign of the time for action. And this is about an, an analysis about the character of the economy, about the destruction of natural resources, about an economy that kills. And this analysis seems to me very Marxist. And Marx also analyzed the society by focusing on the basic structure, the economy. But Pope Francis, and that was also spoke Walter before, is also links, he also links his analysis to the concrete suffering of the individuals. 
and especially the option for the poorest reminds very much of the liberation theology. And he describes also, and that was uh, for me really important, also the responsibility of the elites, of the ruling class, we would say. And he has no illusion. And uh, that was also uh, in the speech and the language of Laudato Si and also Fratelli Tutti. Fratelli Tutti is full experiences and disillusionments. And the look of the unsolved problems in the world, the disillusionments in the face of continuing the financial speculation after the crisis of 2008, 2009, he described it also in Laudato Si, the continuation of slave labor of workers in the face of organ and human trafficking. And he sees the destruction of the environment, nature, natural resources of the human life, even five years after Laudato Si. In the view of this continuing development, Pope Francis cannot describe the alternative as the illusion, it's clear. But he described it, and that is good for me. The, this language is, is really important. He described it as a finally call to act. And uh, I have I was looking for how many how many times uh, the word politics or politicians is known, more than 60. Therefore, the social encyclical is addressed to all people, regardless of the religion or non-religion people. But it is a special way addressed to those who have political responsibility. And this dimension was also presented in Laudato Si, but is a stronger uh, emphasized in Fratelli Tutti. Also, not only to describe the destruction of or destroying of the uh, ecology and uh, of the environmental uh, resources of the human life. It is, a, it is a destruction, it's the consequences of this analysis to address the political class, to address the, his message, especially to the political class, because we have to rethink, we have to rebuild the politics. And this message is going stronger. It's a kind, it's not an, 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 it's a kind of declaration of missing of politics in this moment. And for me, it was really interesting to see in which way he, uh, he uh, analyzed all these different problems and I see a lot of great proximity of discourses between the left-wing discourses and the discourses in Laudato Si and Fratelli Tutti. More or less, also Petra steinmeier Pösebis described in her uh, contribution in the last seminar, webinar, that both Laudato Si and Fratelli Tutti are twins, twin do documents. Laudato Si is more or less the analysis of the situation. And Fratelli Tutti is the call to act, to, both, uh, to build a broad coalition for act. And uh, for me, what's an uh, interesting moment that he described, and that is maybe uh, to understandable, uh, better understandable if you, ha if you have a Christian background. The, the love, the political love and the social friendship as a past pass to alternative. It is a task of love to break the dynamic and direction of indifferences, of ignorance and contempt for the oppressed, abandoned and invisible people, especially also the migrants. And Pope Francis spoke a lot of times about the situation, difficult situation of migrants. And Marx had also this people in his mind when he set the categorical imperative at the end of criticism of religion. He demanded to overthrow all relations in which a man is debased, enslaved, abandoned and despicable essence. 
And also interesting is for me that the understanding of human, it is not the explanation only the individual human. No, the man cannot exist alone. It always needs the others. Only in the community can problems be solved. Therefore, the focus of all actions must be the community. And this, me this means social action, but also the economy. The economy must be an economy for life. The economy for life. This term is also an ecumenic term for the ecumenic between the Christian churches, but also between the Christian churches and the other religions, and also for the non-religious non people, also include the left. The question of what we would describe, or we would describe this, this question as a social ecological transformation. And both are similar. The description, we have to change the world order, and that is new to change the world order. It is more or less the same words as uh, people with uh, left-wing background formulated. We have to change the world order. That means not only the economy. That means also the question for the migrants, the question of living standards, the question of consumption. It's a big question in Laudato Si, and also a question in Fratelli Tutti. And this is also the question of our life. We have seen in the corona crisis, in which way we can reduce, it's possible to reduce our living style. But the question is, in which way we can do it, that everybody have the access to the basic incomes, to the basic goods, and the basic goods as health at, at first, especially under the condition of the corona crisis. It's a special, it's a question of food, of clean water, of education, of culture, of housing, all this bring together in the question of commons and the question of commons as a common strategy for an alternative. That I think it's a good point to think deeper in the dialogue between Christian and Marxist and socialist people. Yeah, so that is my first comment to this question. Thank you. Thank you, Connie. Uh, Raoul, what would you what would be your reaction? And actually, can we indeed um, build a common struggle, the Christians and the Marxists, regarding climate crisis? Do you think that since we need to, 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 to connect and relate the climate crisis with the mode of production, and we need to speak um, the truth, actually, do you see... Uh, Christians uh, to speak the truth regarding the current uh, capitalist system? <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, I think Pope Francis answers all the things in Laudato Si. He's very clear and he uses more or less the same words. So uh, I shouldn't add anything to, to these teachings. I mean, uh, it would be useless to repeat the same things. Uh, so the point is uh, that, uh, as Walter uh, stressed before, uh, that uh, an economy uh, centered in maximization of profit uh, leaves the person behind. No, and how to? Yeah, I mean, this is capitalism, and and is this and and this. Uh, production uh, means of uh, means of production the means the, the way i mean the the system works and and uh, uh, means of productions and the, and the wealth in in hands of a uh, few people mainly in the north part of the world and things there are things very very well explained by pope francis and this is what generates uh, poverty and of course, the ecological crisis is uh, it's uh, it's a social crisis. This uh, this should be said, and also maybe that uh, a spiritual reflection about this uh, should be added. I mean, when 
I don't want to come back to the the things that maybe sometimes uh, things we 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 do not agree uh, with, uh, and we sometimes don't want to touch the things. But uh, as Federico said, maybe uh, about women's roles and, and maybe about abortion and 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 so on. Uh, Yes, you, Walter, you put it in a in a way that I mean it's it's urgent, it's it's not negotiable, etc. Maybe of course that's uh, that's uh, I can't uh, I can't say I can't comment such a thing, of course. But as Federico said, we need a, a common ground. Maybe uh, uh, to reflect in a, in a common ground, uh, we we need to build a path. We need to get to know deeply the reasons of the others. Uh, it's not just about saying what we uh, we always say. Uh, I mean that why why am I am for uh, this uh, for for the for women's rights to abortion or I'm against. But I think Pope Francis indicates a, a good path uh, that is. Uh, I mean. Uh, Go, getting close to people, uh, thinking about uh, the the suffers, uh, the sufferings of the people. I mean, it's not an answer, but the fact is this: that uh, this common ground uh, that's that's the point where where I think we we should go go towards. Uh, maybe uh, can be think also as a spiritual ground. And Pope Francis says in Laudato Si too, no, the cry of the earth uh, is the cry of the poor. No? So it's, uh, that's why the ecological crisis is a social crisis, because uh, he, he said before in, a, in, a, in Evangelii Gaudium, that's an, uh, an exor apostolical exhortation from Pope Francis, that Genuine uh, Christian, let's say, the uh, genuine uh, uh, lifestyle of the gospel uh, is uh, uh, starting from the poor. I mean, choosing the poor, making this preferential option for the poor. So um, when, when Connie said uh, before that uh, society that suppress religions uh, is not uh, an uh, emancipated society, let's say. So it's a very political issue, she stressed. Maybe uh, th this is one, one example of how uh, the richness of the other can uh, offer uh, you uh, a, a, new, a new way of understanding things. So religions may offer uh, a spiritual background, uh, a spiritual ground, uh, from which find new um, new ways of understanding, new new ways of dialogue. And I wanted to react uh, to the last thing. And <laughs> it's of course uh, we we are we are of, of of course younger, and we many times in our dialogue sessions. Uh, asked to to do concrete things, you know, to to do uh, to, to 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 translate this uh, all this knowledge, all this experience in in concrete acts. But uh, yeah, Pope, Pope Francis too says very clear. For example, in order to see that we should change to new uh, to uh, to renewable um, energy or things like that, but. I think by dialoguing uh, uh, and that by making public sometimes uh, our our dialogue by by showing that uh, we can uh, be open to the other, we can make space, make room for the other in ourselves, and um, for the other, I mean, for the other that is different from me that has. Uh, sometimes radical different uh, thoughts and so maybe it, it harms it hurts uh, 
But going this uh, this deep, uh, I, I think it's a, a, a very political, uh, concrete act because uh, if uh, capitalism is this economical system, if this throwaway culture where we are living in uh, leads us to indifference, lead us to uh, 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 an identitary thought where there's no room for difference, so differences are cancelled, uh, by dialoguing and by making sometimes public uh, this dialogue, or maybe small concrete actions like small webinars or whatever, but who knows, maybe... Um, as for the, uh, maybe, I don't know, uh, working with, uh, with other concrete pride projects, but uh, by uh, testimony, uh, testif um, uh, yeah, testifying, let's say, uh, this, this experience we are doing, uh, it's a very uh, strong way of, uh, and political way to, to respond to this culture of throw, throw away, to this indifference, to, to this, uh, I don't know. So that's it. Thank you, Raul. And uh, Federico, I want to listen to some comments from you. Uh, actually, I have very few things to add to what has been already said, which was very, very rich and thought provoking. And one, maybe one very little thing that came into my mind when I was listening to you is that uh, at the, uh, I, was, I was very, very struck when reading especially Fratelli Tutti, and that at the end uh, of that encyclical, uh, Pope Francis uh, writes very clearly and very directly that the message of um, building a new social friendship and, and the form of political love is directed to everybody. Uh, that is, that was for me very, very interesting that a Pope decides to write into a message which normally it's directed to Christians, right? Specifically, this message is for everyone. And he also very directly says, for Christians, the roots of this need for building social friendship is in the Bible and in the Gospel and in the teaching of the Church, while everybody have other sources to, to root this intention. Uh, but the message is the very same for everyone. So this is a very clear statement that uh, building social friendship is, um, is, 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 an, is a need for everyone. It's something we, we as a society uh, should build and we have to build that we uh, sorry for the the pun but but uh, actually I, um, I I also had the feeling from that from reading that encyclical that one of the core questions is exactly to rebuild the kind of we that is able to to tackle the question he have addressed in Laudato Si so in a sense there are there is a set of problems but uh, it's, it's not yet ready the kind of collective subjectivity that can address those problems. And uh, actually, this is, this is kind of fun, but uh, in just, just some days uh, before reading Fratelli Tutti, I was rereading um, Mark Fisher's Capitalist Realism. And Mark Fisher uses a, a phrase which is surprisingly almost the same as a phrase used by Pope Francis, which is, uh, we are facing challenges, uh, but we still do not have the collective subjectivities able to face those challenges. Uh, so for me, that was a clear sign that, uh, that the, 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 the path is already traced. So we, we know the problems and we have to mobilize together in order to face them. And, I also agree very much with, with what Raul has said that um, dialogue, and in particular this dialogue, is already a political act. This is not an excuse to not doing something more, of course, uh, but uh, I think it's also very, uh, 
uh, very important to recognize that uh, di that dialoguing and uh, bringing together thoughts and needs it's already a step towards the building of uh, of social friendship actually it's 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 the first step uh, towards the building of social friendship thank you federico uh, Valder, would you like to take the floor or we can ask uh, from the audience uh, to pose questions? We have half an hour now and we can have a discussion with the audience. Your microphone. I prefer the uh, Q&A moment to have the questions from the audience. Okay. Um, I have various questions slash comments from... Franz Kronreif. Um, I actually want to ask him if he wants um, to give him video and audio so he can pose more lively the question. Just let me know if you agree. Um. Okay, he agrees. Okay. Ah, hi, Franz. Hi, maybe, hi. Angelina. Maybe you you need to turn on your camera. Uh, yeah, okay. Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay, so you have many comments and questions. Feel free. Um, no. Uh, uh, one comment was uh, on uh, the um, on what uh, Walter said that um, the question of abortion is uh, linked for Christians uh, with uh, the question of uh, a human being as uh, a, a image of of God. Uh, uh, it um, f really some Christians uh, uh, link. Uh, this um, uh, this uh, concept, uh, but um, I would prefer, and I think many uh, Christians prefer, uh, to not link it uh, with uh, the um, word of the Bible that the human being is image of God. But it's more the question when a human being starts to be human being. Uh, this would uh, facilitate uh, our discussion about the portion, I, I think. Uh, because uh, the other one um, is dangerous uh, because um, we destroy uh, a, 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 a strong wall against war, uh, against uh, um, uh, slavery, against... Uh, many other uh, difficulties, crimes, uh, cri crimes uh, against uh, the human being. Uh, and uh, so it's better to stress, I think, uh, uh, that uh, human being is image of God and not to link it uh, with the question of, of abortion. Thank you, Franz. Do you want to comment? I'm asking all the panelists. No? Well, since I was addressed, uh, I can uh, accept uh, Franz's uh, argument. Um, and I think that what this little discussion here also demonstrates is that we are able to approach obviously difficult discussions in a sense of friendship and, and, and solidarity without threatening the broad consensus which exists uh, amongst uh, us. Mm -hmm. And maybe even one uh, ground on which we can also agree in the dif difficult question of abortion is that we want uh, a society in which uh, giving birth to a child and we, in which raising a child does not pose uh, 
the social problems uh, which it uh, currently poses uh, to women. So that uh, we create an women-friendly and children-friendly uh, environment. I think that is the question on which we can uh, agree and which brings us forward. Also, and while accepting that there is a difference which will persist, we will see how things develop. But um, let me um, now um, put forward uh, another aspect uh, of being practical. Uh, maybe you participated in the webinar uh, last week uh, of dialogue. Yes. And uh, in this, uh, Michael Levy uh, raised two really very, one very important question. Uh, and uh, another question which I would like to raise concerns uh, the pandemic. I believe there are two, I would say, political demands on which we could agree and in, in which we could try to build consensus in, in our communities. One is in confronting the pandemic and the necessity of providing people with a vaccine. We should demand that all the vaccines which are now in research and uh, in production should become common goods of humanity. Yes. Yes. Meaning, uh, assuring that they are available to all countries, to all layers of societies, and to all individuals by uh, putting the patents in the public domain and allowing all countries under the condition that uh, they are supervised internationally to produce generica on them. I believe it's a hugely important uh, issue and at the same time at it touches upon the capitalist logic and the logic of creating maximum profits out of uh, the production of uh, the vaccines. And the second um, um, moment I would like to stress concerns uh, that what Michael Levy said, uh, shouldn't we start um, campaigning in solidarity with the indigenous communities uh, in Brazil, defending the Amazonian uh, rainforest. Uh, as uh, Michael rightly says, uh, it is, so to say, paradoxical that these communities, which are very much unknown in the north and the west uh, of the globe, are actually now in the forefront of uh, defending the possibility to coping uh, with the uh, climate crisis and uh, being confronted with a new fascist uh, regime. Uh, they are defending our possibilities to survive in this critical uh, moment of societies. And uh, maybe we will find uh, additional uh, topics of convergence or of possibilities of common actions. But I feel, so to say, the moment in which we now should try to become more practical, and as Connie referred to me, more structural uh, as uh, creating an output of the consensus and agreement, agreements which we have already uh, reached amongst us. And by the way, it would also be a good thing for the European Left Party to take up these two topics. It's not only something which concerns Dialog and our communities, it is something which concerns the left in its entirety and which concerns all uh, communities of well-meaning people. Thank you, Walter. Yes, this point was what I was thinking uh, to ask you now to do, uh, think a bit and stress out the importance of um, uh, proceeding in practical steps, not um, leaving the project, so to say, to look like more an academic bubble that people would just meet uh, once per while, they talk, 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 just for the sake of the dialogue, but that it is possible to start working on how we can make more concrete practical steps, how this dialogue can be a real thing, a, a, a material thing. So, um, of course, I know that it is very difficult to, to present 
uh, a complete practical project, it is very difficult. And it is also a matter of collective work. Uh, more minds uh, produce better work. But um, uh, whatever you have already in your mind, how you, uh, you now imagine these um, the discussions to be materialized, what kind of steps can actually, in real life, in everyday life, um, bring these two sides together? Um, thank you, Angelina. I'm Luisa Sello. Hi, Luisa. Hello. I'd like to say two things. Uh, first is that this uh, very organizational thing is that this, um, it was for me pity to know very late about this uh, webinar, which uh, would have been, uh, could have been spread out more. I'm sorry about that because I see we're not that many here and it was a real, a very important issue to talk about. And I don't know what what it was upon, but anyhow, you you know how to take care of that. Uh, the second one, because these webinars are real precious, they are real good things. The second thing is to this uh, um, actual proposal of um, Levy, uh, taken over now by 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 Valta, is that we have a friend in. Um, in Latin America, in Argentina. She lives uh, close to, to the Campesinos and she works at the, um, at the, at the CELAM, which is the uh, conference of the bishops in oh. South America. <clears throat> and she is a university professor and they already had very interesting experiences uh, with the Campesinos and um, taking over land uh, from the landlords and so on. And I, I, an idea could be to build a small group uh, uh, within our two parts and get in contact with her so that we can see, uh, maybe take uh, Michel Levy uh, also in this group and see what could be done or at, listen, at least to listen to her and um, and start to see what could be possible for the left, but also for a common action. I mean, <laughs> now it's uh, it's very far away. It seems that we take care of another continent, but it's uh, as you it's said, our world. it's our world, and we have to start from somewhere. And because of the vaccine. Um, there, there is uh, Katrin Pilzung. Uh, she was uh, also part of our group uh, in the first years. Uh, maybe we can join uh, her uh, to see uh, how to help, uh, what to do, or, or, or invite her to present uh, her project in uh, in uh, in our group or in uh, in the left party. Thank you, Franz. Thank you, Luisa. Connie? It is nice that we are looking for concrete uh, uh, alliances for the both concrete project. And I would also uh, looking for, I have in the Rosa Luxemburg Foundation, uh, Angelina described my background is from the Rosa Luxemburg Foundation, and I coordinate a working group so for religious uh, Chris, Christian Marx's dialogue, and we have <coughs> include our group. Some people, they have a lot of contact also to Latin America. And I would ask also my people from the Protestantic Church, is it also possible for, for them to build a real economic, uh, eco ecumenic yes. broad alliances mm -hmm. uh, yeah. to these yeah. Christians? And we have also in, in our transform web network, for example, three uh, institutions from Spain and one institution from Portugal. And all these institutions have also a lot of contact to our uh, Latin American comrades. And that means we have to build a real working group in which way we can push forward both initiatives the initiative for the, um, for the vaccine, 
we should combine with the European Left Party and looking for some initiative from Christian side in which way we could support and strong connected also with the European Union. That means uh, with the different, uh, with the different uh, political groups in the European Union, especially of course the radical left. But also we have to looking for, could we find a uh, common ground also with the Greens? and also for with the social democrats and we have to looking for concretely more concretely is it possible to build such kind of different alliances between us but i'm sure we going forwards we can go for going forwards to this different both steps mm -hmm. and you will be Thank one you. of the coordinator, Luisa, yes? Mike. Luisa, your microphone. Yes. yes. Um, well, uh, we can really get in touch with Susanna Nguyen and ask her um, at least to, 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 to see each other on Zoom and, and start to talk about this. Uh, maybe, Angelina, you could... Um, you could be the coordinator for, for I mean, uh, for building the group. Then we can put this, um, uh, uh, because I think we have to talk to, to different people. So Susanna could be one who is in South America, and you talk <coughs> about the ones um, um, in, in the three uh, groups in Spain, or Spain, yes, Portugal. Spain, Portugal. Um, Maybe we, we think a little bit more how it could take shape, uh, but um, we keep in touch, Angelina, and, and so that we can find a, a, a roadmap and, a, and a, a way to get together. Hmm. Uh, a, uh, a question. Um, could we have the registration of this yes. webinar so we can uh, send it to some of these uh, persons we mentioned uh, uh, um, yes, I, I will tell you. I will send um, an email. It an email will be sent automatically to okay, all the okay, people okay, that okay. have registered. Okay. But within so, this email, I need to ask their permission to use their email address. So I will do it. And if we have the permission, yes, they, we can use these email addresses. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. <clears throat> Okay, does anybody else wants to react on anything or say a comment, a final comment maybe? We have 10 minutes to close. We still have time. Don't be so modest. <laughs> ah, there is a question. I'm sorry, I didn't see the question. Okay, there is a question. Um, there are so many field cooperation initiatives, for example, in my country, France, uh, we have and had worker priests working alongside with communist municipalities, socially engaged Catholic youth movements, which were not segregated in the radical left spectrum, were not when at least um, the woman that posted was an activist. Cooperation between NGOs, Christian and radical left Marxists, uh, initiatives about the torture, migrants, cooperation is just natural. I would love to have presentations about such daily experiences. Maybe you had them in the past in this dialogue initiative. Um, yeah, that's an interesting point. Yes, uh, can I say one, one word about this? Uh, of course, you can say <laughs> as many as you want. We have 10 minutes, speak. Great, I won't speak for 10 minutes. Uh, <laughs> no, anyway, this is interesting because it's something that was uh, coming uh, through my mind when I was listening to you speaking. Uh, is this, I, I very much like the, the idea of Luisa of keeping, of keeping in touch with, with someone in, uh, in Latin America, also because I think that um, if we want to get practical, uh, we really need to get in touch with people who are on the ground for both sides, uh, because it, it's true that until now this dialogue have uh, have been conducted really on a 
on an ideal and academic level. So if we want to do something practical, we, we also need to talk to those who are already on the ground. Um, so yes, the, the experience that was on the question, it's very interesting on this. And it made me think, for example, which is just, just an example actually was not part of this project or anything, uh, of the experience of the NGO Mediterranea, uh, which uh, I, I have close friends in, which is great an example of this, because that was uh, originally from coming from, um, from, from, from the area of social centers, but actually right now I have many people from the Catholic Church working for them or raising money for them uh, around the migrant question. So uh, maybe it's really, uh, it, it would be a really a good thing to keep in touch with this kind of people. Thank you, Federico. Thank you, Federico. So, okay, we do have a practical proposal that was that is good. I believe we had a fruitful debate and also we ended up with something more material. Um, thank you all for being here. Thank you. I want to thank the speakers who accepted actually the invitation and also the participants. Um, we really need to start working on more concrete proposals and starting engaging more people on that, also young people. And uh, we need to promote more this dialogue. I know for, at least, well, uh, from my side, I know for the leftists, it's hard to swallow such kind of initiatives. It needs, uh, it is a matter of debate. It needs persuasion uh, to have more people be engaged in a permanent basis on such initiatives. Um, thank you, Walter. Thank you, Connie. Thank you, Raul. Thank you, Federico. Yes, we want also to thank the interpreters because we had also friends uh, interpretation and the organizers of the European Forum, the people from the party of the European left. Uh, we have many materials of all the uh, various initiatives of the Dialogue Project in Transform's website. My colleague Barbara Steiner had been posting information on the chat box. So you have all of them. Thank you so much. Have a nice evening, have a good uh, weekend. Take care and be safe. Thank you very much, Angelina. Thank you very much. Thank you, Angelina. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Stay healthy. Stay healthy. Bye.